so they're really, even though there's unincorporated <coughs> spaces out there in some areas, there's been uh, either a hit or miss <coughs> of, of, you know, solving, if you will, a free rider problem. Now, I've seen it go both ways. In the case of East Valley of Phoenix, specifically the city of Gilbert, when they did the next land, they kept leaving islands of uh, non master plan fee simple households in the middle of it. Now, these households were not taxed at the same level as the former municipality who were only paying Maricopa County tax. But they were so swept and encircled by the municipality that they were essentially given all the services they used to park. They had fire protection and so on. So at one point, you know, this became such a sticking point that the mayor of Gilbert threatened to not put out fires. And he checks your address. They're going to literally look at the, tell the firemen check the address, you know, firefighters ought not to go to uh, <laughs> such and such address, let it burn to the ground and they can create a volunteer structure. So this is, you know, this region is not alone in that it's, a, you know, there's issues of, I'm in a rel relatively privileged community, although I feel like we've just got enough resources to get by and you'll create a zero sum dynamic and that's going to create a tremendous hostility even the discussion of the process. The process. And then on the other side are people who've been paying, who then have had eddies of privilege and free riderness emerge amid their space, and they're getting carried because they're less burdened with some of the region-wide taxes or county-level taxes or municipal taxes that you would expect for the delivery of that service. And the resolution is never, you know, the warfare on this never works. The resolution of this is a clear-headed understanding of a, you know, what are the benefits, and you know, and, and what have been the the trade-offs already for having provided some of these spaces that have not been full participants. And I can't emphasize this enough. You have to start by saying we're not talking about distracting it. Going forward, the structure that captures more of the growth and more of the opportunity in the region will follow, you know, uh, a path where we're called, where we're partners. But we didn't come here to go look over your municipal budget, determine that you seem to be spent for us, sweep the budget, collectivize it, direct it away from people who aren't paying the taxes. Anything that hints at that, anything that looks like it's on any path towards that, is met with immediate hostility. And a state like this, under home, home rule, the capacity of a locality to hunker down and fight its way out through lawyers, you know, to, to fight its way out through you know, kind of the judiciary, if you will, rather than the legislative process. It's pretty strong. There are places where, you know, because of the other state constitutions, it's, you know, we're going we're gonna to have to bring you in and you're going to have to pay this. Right? You can't stay out of it anymore. You're going to have to cooperate on these sets of common um, assets, and you, you can't be outside the system, if you will. So, I'm still ready to answer some more questions. Uh, we have a boundary commission. Are you familiar with that? What's your opinion? Um, could you brief me on? I've, I've heard it in the past, but I'm not sure of which boundary you're referring to. Uh, the county boundary commission. Is this the one that looks at? Uh, is this the one that looks at districts? The municipal Yeah, municipal Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, help. again, you know, I've seen the state of play of this around the, uh, around the country. You know, if there is a demonstrable free rider issue, that is to say, if there is a case where you can identify uh, a group of residents or a, you know, a, a sort of local government that is producing one, one not contributing what would be a particular <coughs> amount for, you know, a county asset or a larger asset, or in the case, and I've seen this in New Jersey, where the state can show that because of its inefficiency due to the tininess of the district, that the state share of resource exceeds what it does predictably on a bigger scale. So that was in New Jersey, concurrent to this discussion here, uh, under Chris Christie. You know, he asked a total top-down review, I mean, a bottom-up review, rather, of all of these families, of all these districts, of all these municipalities, in an 
effort to sort of renegotiate the terms of those boundaries, create collective boundaries, and change the boundaries, the district name, so that no population under these, there were service tiers, like school was one service tier, fire was another service tier. Some of the thresholds were you couldn't be below 5,000, some of the thresholds you couldn't be below 10,000, because below those, the state could demonstrate that it was, the state was providing a sort of subsidy large scale. So if you, and in the case of New Jersey, the state government was the instigator of the change. Because the state government was unfairly argued, unfairly burdened, with essentially providing municipal services to smaller localities that refused to partner with bigger localities or partner among themselves to produce outcomes where they